Hello, hello. Hello, Dr. Williams. How are you? I'm doing good in yourself. I'm well. <laughs> as I'm well as well can be during these times. Yeah. Right. We're going to have a discussion about how, um, basically, we're going to, um, I would want Dr. Williams to lead the panel on, um, on how we want to cover, you know, the truth and reconciliation with this project and how we're going to engage the community about how this uh, is important now as well and um, how it affects our, our lives because it's definitely affecting our lives and it has been for a long time. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, I think where I would start in terms of truth and reconciliation is actually admitting <laughs> yes. the horrors um, of black and brown people uh, mm. on the mainland of America, um, yeah. starting with the 1619 um, project idea of the first ship, um, documented ship arriving, um, what was it, Virginia? Mm. So, like, just we have to start there because we can't start in the middle of the story because it's all attributed to this long history uh, over 400 years of slavery and just free labor. Yep. Um, and the ways in which they have used uh, power in various ways to continue to enslave us, maybe not physically, um, but mentally, um, uh, through the oppression of jobs, um, so forth and so on. In addition to when it comes to the penal system, um, the idea that people try to present is it's all about rehabilitation but that's not the real <laughs> point of it. Um, if anyone knows about um, the development of police officers, it's really out of uh, slave catchers. Mm -hmm. um, that was the whole kind of premise of policing um, was to really catch slaves. So with that mindset carrying it over to 2020, it's still happening. Um, still thinking of us as slaves, as free labor, as um, individuals that can be controlled by them. Um, Property. Oh, right, right. And, and once you get in the penal system, that's how they treat you, um, mm -hmm. as if you're property. Um, mm -hmm. Usually doing manufacturing jobs or jobs of some sort, um, some prisons engage in that. And only pay prisoners like 20 cents, 25 cents, something very low wage. But again, yeah, because the they're not part, viewed, they're not viewed as 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 humans once they're behind those bars. They're viewed, they're viewed as animals that they can control. And I feel yep. I feel that the only reason they actually do pay them is to say that they pay them. You know what yep. I mean? It's it's not. It's not because it's the right thing to do. It's not because they mm -hmm. have rights just because they made a mistake one time and they're paying for it, they don't have any more rights. I think it's just to say, oh no, we pay them. So it's not slavery. Yep. They, they try, to, try to frame the conversation as if, oh no, they're actually working yeah. at their own free will when it's really not that. Um, that's nothing that you could live off of nope. by any means. <laughs> not at all. And another, like, just to add to that, I think that's a, that's another way we can engage the community with this to bring to the awareness of how easily you can be coerced into be putting into that situation. And I think that, um, one of the messages that this, this, this project that we're doing is, um, you know, keep your mouth shut, let a lawyer do the talking, 
you know, because right. until we start teaching our people how to deal with the legal system, this is going to always happen. And coercion is a big part of the problem. It's a yep. big, big part of the problem, especially with with mass incarceration. Exactly. It's purposely done um, by politicians because this is how they get reelected. We're getting criminals off the street. Yep. So by any means necessary, we want to make sure these charges stick, regardless if this is the right person or the wrong person, not mm -hmm. going any further. Too often, it's like, this person was there. I have enough evidence or I think I have enough evidence to link them to such and such crime. So that's that's all we need. We're not going to search for anyone else. Um, prime example is the Exonerated Five, which is Central Park Five. Mm. Um, is one of the prime examples of making the these huge leaps just to say we caught the person. Yep. Just to say we're doing our job. We doing our job the right way. And it, and you know, it, it, the, the the biggest the biggest slap in the face to me, it's always like, you know, let's get him to admit he did it so we can shut this down. When the when the real reason they that they're that they have that job is to actually find the the actual person who committed that crime, but that's not what they're worried about because they're gonna let that guy stay on the street to do it again. Yep. You know, yep. as long as we got a guy that is black and admitted to it, if we can get him to do it, then, you know, I get to be sheriff or I get to, I get to get promoted or, you know, it's always about me, 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 me. Right. Like how, how they make themselves look good to, to, the, com to the community. Yeah, right. it's another side effect of capitalism because these people are trying to get money to support their families and that's why they need to move up in the system to get more money to be paid more. So it's 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 a competitive market, and that there's no place for that in the justice system. Yeah, it's designed for us to fail. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also this idea of um, the blue code or whatever it is. This yeah of code of honor among police officers regardless of what's going on mm. is another big issue in terms yeah. of incarceration yeah and, and the that's I, I don't i don't i always find that funny because it seems to me like the code of honor is more important than the oath that they swore mm. yep. and it's it's always always this has always been the case and it's a big big problem it it is. I was having a conversation um, with some friends and just because uh, defunding police um, is a big topic right now. Mm -hmm. um, and what does that mean? Um, my friend asked me, what do I think of police officers? And I said, all of them are bad. He was like, well, there, there are a few good ones. No, no, there, there were no good ones when you are sitting and letting other officers do what what they're doing. Yep. So you're being complicit in this entire situation. So the entire system, I don't care if you black, brown, white, purple, if you're a part of this system and not saying anything, you're part of the problem. Well, there are stories out there about, peop about uh, police officers who are doing something, who are saying something, and then they get fired. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why you can say, you can say all of them are bad because they're no longer police officers. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? The one, so the ones who are staying are the ones who are, mm -hmm. you know? So, so I think that's a great point, Jay, because it, it really, it really confirms that all police are bad. Yeah. Because even when a, a cop tries to do the right thing, he gets shoved under the mat. Desk duty. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're no longer you can no longer be in the street because we don't want you to 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 tell our secrets. Right. You're not gonna move up in the ranks. You're you're forever gonna be at this position if you remain in this position. Um yeah. 
this is the only place you will exist because I don't want you to mess up my opportunities to steal drug money, to plant drugs on individuals, or just all of the stuff or things I've done in the past. I don't want that to come to the forefront by you rising through the chains. Mm -hmm. how, how, do, how do we engage the community? You know, how, how do we bring them into this, to this world of theater to tell the story and um, how, how we can help people find a way to not let this happen to them? Yeah. Um, it's tough. I would say <laughs> talk through stats and everything else, but, but for some reason, people, they're not interested in facts. No. For whatever reason. I think there needs to be a clear conversation with, with the community um, from the perspective of those who've been incarcerated yes. um, or railroaded in some type of way. Because too often um, there's this cog um, cognitive uh, dissonance that is created um, in these situations. And because it's not a personal thing, it's like, oh, I don't, I don't care. But we have to make it personal yep. for them to care. Yep. And 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 I can say that I've had my own personal experiences with this. I can say that I have very close friends and family members who have had experience with this, who have served time for for things they absolutely did not do. And then at the end of the day, they still serve their time, and the charges get just get dropped, or they just throw it away. But who's going to give that time back? Mm. You know, you can't give yep. that time back. And yep. scars are made. The, the, the PTSD is there. All, all these problems that come with going to jail when you don't deserve to be there is, makes, is like a huge effect on our community as men of color and women of color. And um, mm. it's, it, it's, it's honestly just very sad. And I think that we can we can tell this story within our community exactly how um, Dr. Williams had said um, by by having people who actually did go through this and you know yeah. have these dis have these discussions with with within ourselves as as and everyone that's involved in the project and bringing in uh, community leaders also. I think that's a big, big part that, that we can use to in, to engage the community. Mm. Yeah, and like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to hear police talk. I don't want to hear. Um, oh no. <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't want to hear uh, judges talk or dis, or attorneys talk. You know, I, I just time for them to listen and admit. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a key part of the healing is actually getting people who have been in this situation and listening to them because uh, as Dr. Williams pointed out, these days people aren't adhering to the facts of the matter. So you need to put a face, make it an emotional connection mm. so that people can understand that this is something that has happened, is happening, and unless we do something about it, will continue to happen. Exactly. And, and I definitely want police officers and judges and it, anyone a part of the legal system in the audience. Yeah. Um, mm. Because the other part of it, this is much more directly related to the play itself, is although you're exonerated, there's still this stain that you wear yeah. from then on out. We legally on paper and everything else, you may be free, but you're not free because the community is going to remember and associate with associate you with that crime or that thing that they attach to you. Mm -hmm. And you're going to wear that on a day to day basis, like mentally PTSD, it, it, it's going to sit in you forever. And I think 
exonerated um, if we can find some exonerated individuals, have that conversation and talk about their struggles of just existing in society. Yeah, and I'm gonna throw a name out there, Khalif Browder. Um, prime example of what you just described. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how, some, how somebody took his own life, you know, yep. because of what this system does to us. Yep. You know? And I think, you know, and it's it's not just him, it's many, 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 many. Others. Yeah, uh, but it, he is the most prominent person in in terms of where you really was able to see the effects yeah. of it. Uh, there are so many people who suffer in various ways, but his really took a toll on him. He was young when he went in, I think he was what, 16 or 17? And he wasn't put in a juvenile facility. No, he, he was, was put, put in, in the, the, the men. Yeah. At Rikers Rikers. Island at that. <laughs> One of the worst prisons ever. Yep. And coming out of it, it's like I've had all of these experiences. I've had so much taken away from me. How can I ever regain a basic sense of self? How can I reestablish life? For myself, and and I believe that's part of the reason why he took his own life is because he he probably didn't understand how to exist in this new world. Hmm. Yeah, and that's that's um you know that that brings us back to you know just being exonerated and what does that mean you know you know okay go go back out and be a person how do you how do you how do you become exonerated within yourself though how do you let go of everything and the trauma that you just went through how, how do you exonerate yourself i i, I don't I, I i couldn't answer that question um yeah i mean so this yeah this this project is super important super important um especially for right now and i think you know just I definitely want to engage the youth on this. Um, yeah. Big time. And um, I'm going to be working with a couple of community members that I've been keeping an eye on and watching how they've been um, moving through these times right now. And, you know, just within my community and, and you know, any anybody that y'all think, you know, could be a great help to engage the youth on this. Oh well, yeah, I got a couple names. That would be great. Um, I, I think it would, be an excellent idea to have a community organizer, um, mm -hmm. an activist of some sort. So that's um, what I work on. Yeah, so we can talk about the idea of defunding and what it really means and not what people think it means. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really about reappropriating some of the funds, some of the excess funds that they're getting to uh, militarize the police departments and just to line pockets. Funny thing you say that is, um, and and I and I saw this a couple uh, a couple like I think it was a uh, two weeks ago, Jay, maybe that the the mayor of Providence held a, a press conference on truth and reconciliation and reparations. Yeah, I saw that. And um, I just, I just said, wow, this is, you know, it's just like how the universe works, like how we're working on this project now, and just within, I'm, I, just to see something like that in my own city is, was like, whoa. I, I think, um, we need more community policing, but programs. Yes. Um, I remember when I was younger there were a lot of free programs um, out there that you could attend, participate in, um, even if not free, a small fee. But a lot of those things are being taken, taken out of communities. Oh, yeah. And they're not understanding the impact or what they're doing by removing these things instead of fixing or correcting whatever they think is broken about this program. 
um, because students no longer have a safe place to visit, to hang out, somewhere to really direct their energy. So what are you going to do? You're going to hang out and maybe even get in some trouble. Mm -hmm. So but again, you're purposely designing the system for us to get in trouble or to be in this pipeline by removing those things that redirects that behavior. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I mean, you hit that right on the button. Um, just, you know, just, you know, us, you know, we've all, I would like to say probably grew up in similar, with similar views of, you know, how, how, how to just be and how to walk down the street. And, mm -hmm. and um, the pressures of being involved in violence growing up in the inner cities. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a tough thing to say no to. And if, if we had, um, like, like, like Dr. Williams said, com like programs that could, that people could go to, like, you know, like, I, I haven't been seeing so like no more boys and girls clubs. I haven't been seeing kids getting involved at the YMCA's. I haven't been, you know, and, and like when I grew up there, there were more outlets I would like to think. Mm -hmm. And that has just faded away. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, I could have easily fallen into the pattern of like being a part of gangs or or just mystery mm -hmm. yeah yeah running the gamut because yeah. i grew up in lower income housing and right next to us um were, was a subdivision but most of them were lower income of some sort and a lot of the students and people i associated with they wanted me to run the streets with them but the thing that kept me out of that was me staying so active. I never had time <laughs> to get into trouble mm. because I was too busy going to this thing, to that thing, to the next thing. Basically, six to seven days a week, I always had something to do, keeping me occupied. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, and I think that's 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 what that would make a big difference if a lot of more um, people had that mindset, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's a mindset. You know, there's also, you know, you, you need the opportunity, but it's also a mindset, but you need to be taught that mindset. Um, yep. And you know, whether you learn it too late or you learn it early enough, I think it's always something good to be learned within um, our community and something that we can actually probably offer to the youth. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's great. Um, how do you guys feel? I feel like we've covered a lot of the things um, that we wanted to. Yeah. Um, when 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 the reading will be? Um, that's something. Um, you know, I I think we've talked about this, Doctor Williams. Um, but I don't know if you know. Do you think it was a good time? I think, what did, what did we say? Uh, yeah, let's do September 12th because I, I want to make sure. We're all on point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, nobody's going to give yeah. the attention on 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm starting classes. We start back the last week of August, so. I know I'd be scrambling to put my syllabus together. <laughs> <laughs> respect, respect. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, so much. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you, Jay Walker. Great conversation. I think, yeah, we have work to do. The, trying, trying to get us a community organizer. If you guys have anybody in mind or anybody who, who can engage the youth on this i mean just you know hit me up you know i do and we can we can um work together on that. you know more more is better than one to me when it comes to these things yeah so let's try to get our team together i'll work on that um i'll also work on um notifying all the uh actors 
getting them on their A game. Um, yeah. I don't know if uh, maybe I, I'll, I'll hold like a pre-read to the read just to, you know, get everybody get everybody's feet wet. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while. And it's been, you know, for us as artists, it's, it's a tough time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's, let's get back in, you know, let's get back in. Let's get that blood rushing. I think it would be really good to hear their opinions on their character, but overall the story, um, mm -hmm. because they have to connect to the subject matter in order to really portray the characters um, and understanding how it impacts them and how it impacted those individuals. And I can't, I can't wait to move forward with this. Yeah. I'm excited about it. How do you feel, Jay? Oh, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to see you play that character. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why I'm excited. This character yeah. is absolutely wonderful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, Do we need anyone else? Uh, any other actors? I think I think we I think we're fully casted. Okay, perfect. We might be. Um, I'll go over it again. I think I think we're pretty. I think we're casted. Okay. Just but, let um, me know if we're not. Um, because we're starting back to class, I can probably pull a student or two. Okay, cool. Def, I would definitely love that. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. Thank well, you both. Thank you. Have a good one. <laughs>